Hello, I'm Dr. Ron Eaglin. Today we're going to talk about animation, and I like animation. It's a lot of fun to do. And just some of the basics of what you need to be able to do with animation. So uh, I'm going to be doing HTML5 animation on a canvas. As you can see, my little animated dot, or my little animated square is making its way around my square right here, which is just a sample animation. And up here you can see that I'm actually showing the X and Y positions of my little square. I have also have I put a, an event response in here so that if I click, okay, if you saw it, if I click right here, it's going to send the square going the opposite direction until it hits the corner again and then it heads back the other way. And that will actually work on any of the different line segments that you're on. It will actually send it back to the, to the previous intersection and then it will start back in the same direction. So we're going to talk a little bit about how this works. Well, first thing, I'm going to come down here. First thing is, is I've actually got only two things in my HTML here. So if I look at my HTML, I have a div called position and that's just simply where I'm printing the X and Y coordinates and then I actually have a canvas and the canvas is 600 by 400 that's the whole entirety of my HTML that's it so the rest of it we're gonna look at is the JavaScript that makes this work now to have this work I'm actually doing my animation inside of an animation frame and to do animation inside of an animation frame I have to use the method request animation frame which is a, um, a method or function that is one of the window functions. So window.requestAnimationFrame should return an animation frame. Unfortunately, however, it becomes a little bit more complex than that because I want this to work in multiple browsers. So if you look at the, uh, this is the actual function that returns the animation frame, and actually we call this, in this case, it's common that people call this request anim frame. And what it does is it returns the function that's actually going to return the animation frame dependent upon what environment that you're in. Now in the case of what I'm doing right now and running this inside of Firefox, it could just simply be this one line of code actually is the line of code that's going to return the correct animation frame. Well, what is an animation frame? Well, an animation frame is a specific function that you can pass to it another function that actually does the animation drawing. That's the animate, and, and actually in this case I'm going to call that function animate. So in other words, it holds the stuff until you need the frame to do it, and then it calls the method to do the animation and pops the stuff up on the screen. Okay, really what it does is it prevents the thing from flickering really bad, so you're not doing a whole bunch of redraws. So, the methodology of doing this is I go ahead and I request an animation frame, I pass to it a function that's going to draw something on the screen, and then I, if I want to animate, I request another animation frame and pass it the function of what it's going to draw. So what it will do is it will actually do the drawing internally and pop that thing up onto the screen once the, once the drawing portion is done. So let's look at this. That's really not that terribly hard to, to, to fathom, but Let's look at actually where I call this, uh, whoops, right here. I have a function here called animate. And you know what, I'm going to move this over a little bit so we have a little bit more room for the code and a little less room for the animation um, so you can see the code a little bit better here. I have this function called animate and I pass it three things. I pass it R, which is something that I made up, it's a rectangle. I pass it a, the canvas itself. This is the actual canvas that I'm drawing on. In this case, the canvas's name is my canvas. And I pass it a context. And the context is necessary because when you draw on a canvas, you may be drawing it in different contexts. Context defines the functions that are going to be available to you in that canvas. And let's go and see what we define those. Canvas and context. Down here, um, I actually define the canvas. Okay, is get the element by ID, my canvas, which is the canvas I put in the element, and the context in this case is 2D, because I'm going to do 2D based animation. Okay, okay, well that's kind of nice. I have a lot of other variables I put down here that are global variables, start x, start y, stop x, stop y. I have this thing, I called it a car, car width, car height, step x, step y, and then I actually have these things upper left, upper right, lower left, lower right. Well, these are kind of interesting. Upper left is a variable that I've defined to have um, an element X and an element Y. And actually what it does is it defines the upper left corner of the square that the car is going to go around. 
I also define the rectangle, my rectangle, which has an x, y width, height, and a border width. Okay, so let's go up here now and let's look at how the animation actually occurs. So what's going to happen here is I am going to draw this rectangle. Oops, I don't want to do the mouse position. Okay, and I don't actually need that. I'm going to do the draw the rectangle. This is this function down here at the bottom here. And, um, and what this does is it actually sets a timeout um, to, to do the animation. If I start this, it's going to pause for one second or a thousand milliseconds, and then it's going to call animate. Okay, so I draw the rectangle, and then I start the animate. Well, the rectangle itself is this big rectangle. And then I'm going to actually call animate. Okay. Now, if I go up here to animate, function animate, it's past the, a rectangle, the my rectangle. That was the one that I defined right here, the my rectangle. It's past the canvas and the context. The canvas, as you know, is the canvas on the screen. It's past the context, which is the 2D context. And what does it do? All right. Well. R is the rectangle that I want to move around the big, the little rectangle, the little blue one that I want to move around the big one. And I check to see if the location of that rectangle, the X location, is greater than or equal to the upper right. Okay, X location. That's the upper right corner of the big rectangle. And if the Y is less than or equal to the upper right Y. And what it does is it sets a step of X and a step of Y. What it's doing is it's telling it which direction I want the little blue car to move depending upon where the little blue car is. So if the little blue car is in this segment down here where it just was, it's going to want to naturally move up. Okay, And it does this based on looking at all the different potential locations of where the, the rectangle could be. And then simply what I do is I increment the x position of the rectangle by step x and, and I increment the um, y by step y and those step y's and step x's are set by actually having them set right here in these if-then statements. So essentially I'm looking at a square and saying I want the thing to move clockwise around the square. Then I clear it and then I draw the board again because I'm actually drawing this on a new animation frame. The board is the big rectangle. And the big rectangle, this is worth knowing too, in the context here, I pass it a context, okay, and uh, whoops, I, right down here you can see, pass it the context, draw a board, come back up here, and to draw, I begin a path, I move the cursor to a location, x, y low coordinates, then I draw a line to another set, a line to another set, a line to another set, and then I draw the line all the way back around, set the stroke style equal to black, set the uh, width to equal to the car width because I want it to encompass the car, and then I do call the stroke method and it will draw it. So I begin a path and I, I start with a begin path and I end with a stroke. It's really not that hard, there's plenty of reference materials out there for that. So I've drawn the board. Next thing I want to do is I want to draw the rectangle, the little bitty rectangle on the board. Okay, so I come up here and it's not that much more complex I pass it the rectangle and I pass it a context. I begin a path. I draw a rectangle in this case. The fill style of fill, a line with the stroke style and stroke. Okay, and so what I can do is I get this little blue uh, thing with the black border that goes around. And uh, I can actually make some changes here to make it fun. Suppose I change this to yellow. Okay, I want to make that yellow. I'll change the running of it. Okay, and as you see it coming around now, um, I'll move it over here so you can see it. You'll notice that the, if you can see it, it's got a yellow border around it now. So you know those are simple changes that I can make as I go around this. Well, I draw the board, I draw the rectangle, and then I go back and I request an animate an animation frame to draw the next one. And I pass it the function, and this function is going to do two things. Okay, I actually put the x y coordinates up here. That's not necessary to this animation, but I call the animate with the rectangle, the canvas, and the context again um, so that the animation frame will, will create the animation frame that it gets by knowing it's a Mozilla and the function that's passed to it is the actual function that draws this and of course it's going to call the next one. Okay, So that's how this whole thing works. I have one little piece, other piece that I put in here just for fun. Uh, I have a click event that I call off of here. If I click on it, 
okay, I can change the direction. So what I'm doing is I'm saying step x times equal negative 1, step y times equal negative 1, just changes the x and y directions simultaneously. As soon as it hits that um, this corner here, it finds the if-then function and starts the motion going back the same direction. But it does make it kind of interesting. Okay. Also, uh, you may be saying, what's that E for? Well, I was actually capturing an event here, but if I run it without that, okay, it's still going to work exactly the same way. I took that E out, as you just saw, and it's still going to work exactly the same way. So this is a good basis, a very simple lecture to go through how to do simple canvas-based animation um, with just a simple car moving around a big square. Thank you very much and good programming.